This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is a toaster, and this is a pocket toaster. Wait, no, it, it's not a toaster for your pockets. It's a toaster that fits into your pocket. But you don't have to take my word for it, because this wasn't my idea. This idea that I'm about to pitch you was my big idea in high school. I thought this was gonna make me rich. I thought how convenient would it be if I could just make some, I don't know, toast at school in a small, single slice pocket toaster. Yup, this is Logan Paul's idea. But when I watched his YouTube short a couple months ago, I knew I had to do something about it. Now I've built some crazy stuff, jet toys, lightsabers, minecarts, web shooters, even a toaster that turns toast back into bread. So you think that this would be pretty easy, but it wasn't. Very bad, very bad, huh? You can only get me to howl at the moon when it's really bad. <laughs> I probably should have listened to Kevin O'Leary, but it was actually Logan's reaction to Kevin that made me want to do this in the first place. I think it's because people often come to me with their invention ideas. I do my best to give them helpful advice, but unfortunately, coming up with a successful invention is almost harder than winning the lottery. Odds are someone has already done it cheaper, faster, just plain better. But a person's invention is their lottery ticket. If they could just bring it to life, all of their problems would be solved. And even if that's a bit naive, it's still an extremely relatable sentiment. Which is why I wouldn't be surprised if someone as successful as Logan Paul still has a soft spot in his heart for that quirky high school invention that first captured his imagination. So whether or not a pocket toaster is really a good idea, I now have to build it and then find a way to give it to Logan Paul. But of the three main hurdles that I have to overcome in order to make portable toast, it's the first one that scares me the most because it's really, really hot and dangerous. Right, Logan? The fucking toaster blew up. It exploded in the kitchen because I was trying to like unwire the nichrome wires. That's right. Without heat, there's no toast. And without nichrome wire, there's no heat. They're the strips of glowing metal that you see in your toaster. When you run a bunch of electricity through a high resistance wire like nichrome, a sort of electrical friction is generated and it gets hot so hot that it would melt regular wires if you connected them to one. So in addition to having to use all sorts of special materials to connect and hold the heating elements, there's also the problem of what shape do you make it? You see, your home toaster has a giant wall of evenly spaced elements held at a perfect distance from the toast, but that distance is about as thick as my entire toaster. Now, if that was all there was to it, it wouldn't be that big a deal, but we also have to figure out voltage. One of the reasons that Logan's toaster experiment blew up is because he was using the socket electricity of around 120 volts. You see, the length and thickness of the wires in a toaster determine its power. A short piece of heating wire draws more power than a long one, and a thick piece of wire draws more power than a thin one. And more voltage means more power. So for safety reasons, I designed the pocket toaster to run off of 12 volts because it's not enough to shock you. And it means I can run it off of a battery. But now I can't reuse this toaster part. The wire is just too long and it won't draw enough power at 12 volts. Plus it's too big for a pocket. So I had to make my own heater element that is just the right length and thickness and shape to evenly toast the bread with a much shorter gap and a much lower voltage. Needless to say, I had to do a lot of tests to find this coil. So my shop is now covered in pieces of crappy toast, but I think I've found an alternative use for them. Tell me what you see. A, uh, a poorly made piece of toast. Aha. Uh -huh. And what do you see here? Um, a poorly made piece of toast. And this one, my father. Yes? He's yelling at a waiter about a poorly made piece of toast. Now being hot isn't a problem for, you know, hot people, but for most materials it is. The reason that the plastic outside your toaster doesn't melt is because it's far away from the heating elements. Toasters could be a lot smaller if they weren't so full of air, but that air is precisely how they insulate. Our pockets just can't handle all that empty space. So compressing our toaster means assembling an elite team of specialty materials. Polyether ether ketone is one badass plastic. He can operate successfully at almost 500 degrees Fahrenheit and bathe in solvents that would dissolve most other plastics. But his services come at a high price. This is $90 worth of half inch peak. Aerogel the insulator isn't fooling around when it comes to thermal isolation. With red hot heating elements less than a half inch away from the bottom of this toaster, even a thin slice of aerogel makes all the difference in keeping it cool. 
Speaking of cool, those heating elements are so volatile that they need one tough ombre to handle them directly, but these mica sheets don't break a sweat at anything below 1300 degrees Fahrenheit, and they make a pretty cool looking cage. And of course, how could I forget stainless? His steely gaze doesn't flinch while shielding and refracting the heat out of the chamber and straight into this toast. But not, of course, before passing through the slots in the stainless grill that's held on by stainless screws. And this A-team would be nothing without the support of the anodized aluminum plates, Teflon gasket, machined aluminum buttons, limit switches, relays, XT60 connector, and a mixture of high temperature and silicone wire. Okay. So this isn't exactly budget friendly. After all, few people would buy a pocket toaster that costs four times as much as a regular toaster in materials alone. Heck, I even tried to repurpose some existing cases to save some money and time, but quickly found their build quality to be lacking. Besides, this is for Logan Paul, which is also why you might recognize the grill cutout design because I lifted the pattern off of his merch website. In fact, over the countless hours of sketches, design iterations, test after test after test, I basically just pictured handing Logan something that at the very least wouldn't burn down his house, and hopefully he might actually think looked cool. And even if he doesn't, I think it's pretty dope. Tell me in the comments what you think. You know what I think, Joel? Make some toast, and don't forget the butter. Fair point. Here is how you make toast on a pocket toaster. First, you connect either the 12 volt adapter or a sufficient battery. Next, you hit the on button and wait two minutes for it to warm up. Then you place a piece of bread in the center of the grill. The reason that the toaster has to warm up first is because the bread will dry out from being on low heat for too long. After three minutes, you flip the bread over and wait another two and a half minutes. Then you have your toast. Let's try it. Here's my reaction to eating the first truly successful piece of pocket made toast. That's toast. That's toast. That's toast. Now at this point, I could tell you how the bottom is almost 700 degrees cooler than the heating elements after toasting a piece of bread, or how it can make about three pieces of toast on this battery. Or I could show you some fancy thermal camera scans to pinpoint the exact temperatures of the various parts. This thing took so much work that there's just no way I can cover even half of it in one video. But I bet what you really want to know about is what Logan Paul thought. And frankly, so would I. So let me tell you about that after a quick word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a powerful, beautiful online platform for creating your website and fostering an online community as their fully integrated commenting system supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. They also connect you with your audience to generate revenue through gated members-only content. You can manage your members, send emails, and leverage audience insights all on one easy-to-use platform. Their powerful blogging tools can categorize, share, and schedule your posts, and you can display posts from your social profiles on your website, as well as automatically push website content to your social media channels for your followers to share. They even have new third-party Squarespace extensions to help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash joelcreates to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks, Squarespace. So, was I able to reach Logan Paul? Well, last week when I finished the pocket toaster, I had my agent reach out to his people, but we sorta got left on red. Now, I'm sure that he and his team are super busy, which means that if you want him to see this, I need you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and run around your neighborhood with body paint that says pocket toaster forever. In the meantime, I'll be eating crispy bread in my basement, the park, the arcade, and anywhere that my pockets take me. I'll see you next time. You forgot the butter. There's no butter in this video.